From the Middle is proud to be a founding member of the Odd Pods Media Network. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 143 of From the Middle. We are three middle-class guys living in the middle of America in the middle chapters of our lives with a point of view that is somewhere in the middle. We are a calm, laid-back podcast. We try to keep things light and funny, uh, and we're glad to have you here. If this is your first time around, um, welcome. Give it a listen, and we hope that you enjoy being a fly on the wall as we talk about many different things this week. Uh, we talk about Gold Belly, which is the delivery service where you can get things delivered to you, food items from your favorite restaurants from across the, the United States. Um, we talk about Corey and his uh, wardrobe choice today. Um, we're also talking about expensive Nike shoes. Uh, we find out where Smirnoff vodka is made. And, uh, and, and, and we talk about what we're, what we're streaming. So... We love you guys, and uh, we hope to hear from you. Enjoy. Here it goes. <coughs> oh, for the love. <laughs> Sorry, just clearing my Mountain Dew hole. I got my phone hole clean today. That's where you keep it? You're so cerebral, and you're so developed and evolved. Kendall, I'm glad that you could join us this evening, but I'm a little bummed that you decided not to go to where you were going to go tonight. Uh, yeah, well, I, uh, so tonight, the night that we're recording this, uh, in Columbus, Ohio, Monday Night Raw is happening live as we speak. And, uh, I was, my wife is the one who knew, who found out. Now, and I, uh, she told me via text message and I, I told her immediately, like, I love you so much for not only knowing this, but like immediately telling me once you found out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so, but by the time, like I started looking for tickets, it was like, you could find tickets, but they weren't good seats anymore. And the only other way I could get decent seats would be to go through the resale situation. Yeah. And I'm not going to pay that kind of money. So I I decided to wait for the next time around. Columbus is not uh is not foreign to the WWE. They like to come around here. I'll get another opportunity probably later this year. So Yeah. You know something that comes to Columbus a little less frequently, UFC and they're going to be here for a fight night at the end of this month on the 26th, I believe. Um, and even clear up in the nosebleeds against the wall at Nationwide are like $95 a seat. Wow. I've never been to either a pro wrestling or sports entertainment event or UFC uh, fight night, and either would be very cool. So if anybody wants to just gift tickets, um, let us know. <laughs> if uh, if UFC is looking for sponsorship opportunities, a couple tickets our way, apparently. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, shout out to Amy. That's super cool. Not only keeping you informed on that, but not trying to intentionally bury that news. Uh, she went the other way and was like, Hey, check this out. That's super awesome. Indeed. How are you guys? What's new? Well, I, I had a, I had a little story in the vein of my continued attempts to try to use food delivery services. Wait, um, I thought you were just done. I thought you were done. Well, this one was different, <laughs> okay. And, and I'll explain why. Normally, I don't share my custom names for our Zoom meetings, um, but it's going to parlay into into my story. So, uh, my name for this week uh, for recording this week is "All That Glitters Is Not Gold Belly," uh, because at one point Corey had told us about a delivery app uh, called Gold Belly to get uh, foreign and exotic, incredible foods delivered to your doorstep. Um and dine like kings because he had heard about it. He I died like I don't remember kings. selling it that way, but go ahead. Dine like Putin in Moscow. Uh and uh, so so we, <laughs> here we go. We're really not a political podcast, despite what our intro says. So 
But anyways, so my wife uh, had family from uh, had family in Louisiana. So Mardi Gras was always a big deal for them. And she really wanted to try King's cake. So she remembered Gold Belly and we were looking them up and there was like different local places. And um, so she finally picked one and there was different options. And we're really excited. You could pick the day that you want it to deliver. Um, so we're like, this is pretty cool. Because our normal grocery store chains will get kind of a basic version of a king's cake that, you know, you can go in and, and snag one. So we made we got cream cheese filled one with the it's a kit and you can make it and it's this nice thing. And so the day comes and the day goes that it's supposed to be delivered and it never shows up. And so we reach out to Gold Belly and there's sort of like the shrug emoji, like we can't control the shipping companies. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, but then why did we pick a date <laughs> that yeah. we wanted it? Otherwise, just order it and say it's it'll get there when it gets there. Uh, I know intended date that you want it. So anyways, so I think it was another two days later that we got it. Um, and. So King's Cake, at least in our area, if you think of like going to the grocery store, you think, you know, 10, 15, 20 dollars, something like that for a King's Cake. This one was something like 40 or 50 and there's a coupon and a thing and to get free shipping. And um, so I'm expecting, well, obviously for this kind of experience, they're going to have to put it in like a styrofoam pack. Like if you do like Omaha steaks shipped across the country and they're, it's going to be this whole thing. It was like a FedEx ground box. <laughs> like they, they slid, they slid it, they slid it in with a few packing peanuts. So it was like smashed. There was like cream cheese all over, <laughs> all over the thing. Uh, and I said, you might, cause at first we're like, we kind of understand Gold Belly's position. Obviously, yes, you can't control the shippers, although that's your thing. So, like, you kind of need to stay on top of them. But then the other part of that is, like, you do kind of expect the places that are shipping this to, like, treat it with this is going across the country and this is the thing we're proud of. So <laughs> I told my wife, I'm like, you might want to take a picture of that King King's cake just to send to Gold Belly so they can see it because, like, uh, it's pretty smashed. I will say, uh, because it was sealed, we did still open it and decorate, you know, as much as we could and and try some, and it was good. Um, you know, it was it was fine for uh, as as beat up as it was, but I am kind of intrigued. She's she's found some. We're we're not going to be done with Gold Belly just yet. Um, she did find some like East Coast seafood options, uh, and I thought, well, maybe for birthday they can ship you. I would hope those would be in cooler packs of some kind, but like we can ship some pretty good stuff. So we might have to try it one more time, but the first experience, uh, maybe not so great with gold belly. Um, yeah. and if anyone else wants to try it, their whole shtick is like all sales are final. So it's like, we can try to get you shipped another one or we can give you a credit because that's what we do. This isn't, this isn't like a get your money back, you know, kind of thing. So I feel like, if you're going to use gold belly, I, I would think for most people, it's because they have a particular place way over there in mind that they want to order something right. from. And if that place over there wanted people to be able to do that, they could just say, hey, you can do that. Here's how much it costs UPS to bring it to you. Sure. And I feel like, what does gold belly do? <laughs> I feel like Gold Belly consolidates the popular options for people that want to be able to browse and pick something. It's because, yeah, like, I'm my not, point I'm, is, like, how many people are browsing to pick something? Well, I feel like most people are like, I want a king cake from New Orleans. Apparently, we did because that's how my wife landed on a king oh, cake. Oh, well, there you go. You know, I so I think it's a thing. Um, I think there, I think some people just want to try something new to me. It's almost like Groupon, right? Like mm -hmm. we're going to just consolidate things that you could go do. And it's like, well, I can just search where to go kayaking in Columbus. Right. But like, there might be opportunities you didn't know that you would want to go try. Uh, maybe that's a bad example. Groupon's basically dead, but <laughs> <laughs> so that's the idea. I was like, and that's what I'm thinking. Maybe it's for people who are like, Ooh, I want to try something. I've never had before something really okay. popular to Chicago or but to they New can't York. quite put their finger on what it is they want. Yeah, maybe. 
maybe, you know, but I think you're right. I think most people would, I would think about it in terms of where am I from or where have I been? I really like that one thing. I'm going to go to their website and see if they ship me that one thing. Right. Yeah. Uh, knowing, knowing full well that there are regional hotspots for different dishes, right? So like right. you're going to want seafood from one of the coasts or you're going to want deep dish from Chicago or you're going to want whatever. And that's how I had heard of it. Right. Because, um, one of the comics I listened to, I, it was Bobby Lee. He was talking about gold <laughs> belly because he likes Lou Malnati's pizza mm-hmm. from Chicago. And so he gets all these like frozen pizzas from Lou Malnati's or refrigerated maybe. And then he freezes them. But anyway, <laughs> and uh, you can't get them any other way. And so he's like, this is awesome. And I thought, you know, I'm an idiot. What? What? Maybe they just have the logistics figured out where they've got like, <laughs> They know those connection points from the hot spots, and I don't know. Yeah. Well, still not a bad idea. I think if anyone's really curious, they should try it. Um, but just this is sort of a buyer beware situation. You're picking an estimated date you want it delivered. They will not guarantee it. Uh, and all sales are final. So just be okay with that, too. And if you are, great way to try some stuff. Yeah, because that'd be the other thing that in my head I'm thinking, like, if they could if they could guarantee like a, a good delivery then that gives them something that they can mm-hmm. sell yeah or like if they had that. worked out something where part of their cost is they're going to make sure it always ships express like mm-hmm. two day express but they figured you know they're going to eat part of the shipping out of their service charge to make sure that whatever like that's right uh, that's what my thing or maybe they've worked out something with the the restaurants that the restaurant will or these places will always ship today um yeah. to make sure that you get things as quickly as possible yeah. um you know but you, you don't know what it could be about. it could be that yeah. it could be that kind of model like gold belly maybe has some clout now that they can promise restaurants look if you get on board with us it will be worth your while because you're going to get so many more of these orders. So you're not yeah. just shipping out the one or two random ones. That's like taking up uh, inconvenient times during your day. It's like you can change your business model because we're here. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can hire somebody to start shipping these orders out, opening right? it up to whole completely new markets with some consistency and, yeah. and yeah. A, a new income stream. I'm bummed, man. That's like, I'm like, Oh, for two or three on recommendations to your household. There are a couple of, of others. That I've well, <laughs> I think one of those, one of those we were lukewarm on was in Kanto. I'm going to leave a moment for the gasping for anyone listening. Um, and we really came around to Encanto. You play that soundtrack enough and we really came around to it. And actually my daughter um, has now said it's her favorite movie over frozen, which is a big deal. So I hopped on to the, the top hundred chart on apple music and two encanto songs are within the top 25 or so right now. i don't i don't know if we talked about this uh on the podcast but i guess we don't know about bruno actually outsold as a track the let movie? it go from oh, frozen wow which i like isn't even like that's let from let it go is clearly the most popular track in frozen and has got several that could easily be like the most popular song. And I guess it had already outsold let it go like a month ago wow. uh, because wow. somebody had, somebody had Lin-Manuel Miranda on a late night show. And he's like, yeah, I guess Bruno's already outsold let it go and whatever, which I thought was crazy. So uh, very, it's obviously doing very well. So you didn't, that one didn't flop. We'll talk about what we're streaming later, but have you seen in the Heights yet? No. I see. I need to watch that one. I was late to the Hamilton thing. I was late to the Lin Manuel Miranda bandwagon, and then I finally watched Hamilton when it came out free on Disney Plus, and I was all about it. We watched it dozens of times in our household during the pandemic, and uh, I just everything he touches, man. We're now at the point too with the podcast where we can say we specifically talked about that on the podcast a year or two ago. So now if you want to hear our initial reactions to Hamilton, you can now go back and we've talked about it. Uh, and I think we all enjoyed it because we all watched it around that Disney plus launch. And uh, I thought it was great. It was so much fun. So yeah, I watched he is. about 10 minutes of it and gave up really. Oh, well, that, maybe was, that, was, that was my thoughts on Hamilton. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, I like, I like the dude, uh, but um, Hamilton or Lin-Manuel Miranda. <laughs> 
<laughs> Miranda. Okay. When he was on House, I enjoyed his character on House. Uh and uh which made me want to like Hamilton. And and I don't dislike musicals even, but there was just a disconnect for me on that one. Like I just I don't know. I don't know. Watching it, I just had a really hard time getting into it. I gave it the solid try and I was like, you know, I I would rather be doing something else right now. I'm just now learning that Len Manuel Miranda was on house. <laughs> Yeah, like that's where I remember. That's where I was introduced to him. And then when wow. people told me that that, and then like, because then I found out that that guy was an actual rapper. And then I found out that that guy was, was, uh, was, was doing Hamilton. And so I was like, all right, sweet. I just found out that when Manuel Miranda want to do was at least a little bit responsible for getting Brooklyn Nine Nine revived, because he was such a big fan, oh, wow. he was like tweeting about it. And him and some other people like Seth Meyers and whatever were big enough fans that ended up supposedly ended up helping get it revived. And Lin-Manuel Miranda was uh, uh, rewarded with an actual uh, uh, bit part on the show. And Seth Meyers uh, was rewarded with a criminal uh, sketch on the show of him. (laughs) So yeah, shows you how those two rank up uh, in the, in the celebrity world, but yeah, no, he was, was funny. in the, uh, in the house TV series, he was like, he was like how ha- Dr. House's, uh, like second man, like in the funny farm, right. he was like his best friend when he was that season that he was, uh, in the hospital. Hmm. So wow. He was, he was a prominent character for it for a season. Hmm. Yeah, I learned. Anyway. Yeah. He rapped on there too. Mm. So he be rapping. Yeah, need he to watch be, in the heights. You be rapping. He be I also rapping. haven't watched TikTok hey, yeah. unrelated to in the heights, but the fact that it's musical. Have you watched Tick Tick Boom? Although that is also Lynn Manuel Miranda and Andrew Garfield. Now Corey says thumbs up. Mm, on yes, that one. Very good. Yeah. Okay. Very good. I think we actually covered it in one of our streaming segments in the last handful of episodes, but yeah, it's the story of um, I'm blanking on his name right now. Jonathan Larson, who uh, wrote uh, rent. And this was before the popularity of rent. Um, a, a mu- his second musical, I believe, or first or second prior to that. It's a good story. It's, it's uh, yeah. very close to the real thing. The music's good. Andrew Garfield does a terrific job. Yeah. That must have been one we glossed over, like you just mentioned in passing, because I don't know why I don't remember that. Yeah, I believe it's uh, on Netflix. Sherry and I both watched it. She actually enjoyed it as well. And she's not a massive musical fan. But yeah, it's a good one. So what else is going on, guys? Kendall, you were going to say Are you wearing... No, that's okay. Are you are you wearing a? It, it caught my eye. Honda swag right now. Yeah. So I don't. That's pretty I've, sweet. Okay. Let me before I tell you the story of the the, the hoodie. <laughs> I'm just curious. I've never seen anybody wear Honda swag before. I was talking to a friend about how much I love loved past tense Stello mints, and okay. I gave him a few tins because of their liquidation uh in case you haven't yeah. picked up on it yet um oh. <laughs> wah, wah. It's, okay. it's fine so so stello had a great thing going they couldn't get the traction in the market that they wanted and so we got a bunch of tins of mints anyway so i had some to give out I was giving them to a friend and i was describing why i think they're effective and i said as i usually do when i let somebody try some for the first time it could be just a placebo, but I actually do feel like I notice a difference when I take a mint or two before a high stress situation feels like it just takes that edge off. To which this friend said, if anybody was susceptible to placebos, you are that person. You love a good narrative. You love a good story. <laughs> I feel like they basically just said, you're highly gullible. And he goes, no, 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 didn't say that. I said, you like a good narrative. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't have a friend in your life who can tell you things like that, I highly recommend that you get one. So anyway, this is related. I've found myself purchasing things off Instagram lately in the I've I'm okay. falling for some of these sponsored ads. 
because I started watching yeah. F1 because of the Netflix documentary Drive to Survive, and because I follow Honda because our family owns two Hondas, it recommended some vintage 1983 Formula One gear. So this is made to look like the Formula One crew gear from 1983 for the Honda racing team. And I just nice. thought it looked cool. So I picked it up. <laughs> it is cool. It is cool. That's so much cooler than just like, yeah, I went to Honda's website and they had a merch yeah. section and I bought a Honda sweatshirt because I love my car. Um, you know how much I like a narrative like and I, I need any sort of justification or rationale to buy something. Honda, because my family has two Honda. Also, our surname starts with the letter H. F1, because I started watching Formula One in the last year. In 1983, it's the year my wife was born and the year before I was born. And it's just throwback to the that era. So I was like, I have to have it. <laughs> you just <laughs> or or like you're a Formula One fan and it's a sweet sweatshirt that a Formula One fan would want. Yeah, that would I mean, also. It's work. red, white, and yeah. But it's you red, have, white, but it's so blue. much cooler. It's so much cooler for you. Yeah. yeah. You wrap that. You wrap that narrative around you. It's going to keep you extra warm, just like that hoodie. Uh, <laughs> I, but seriously, it's red, white, and blue, and it's racing, and you're into racing now. That's all you need. That's fine. Like, it doesn't have to. Yeah, that's fine. It yeah. doesn't have to be any more than that. You look very <clears throat> European. Everyone that's only listening is hopping on YouTube, no doubt, to pick up their very own. Um, <laughs> As well, they should, and they should subscribe and hit the dingy bell while they're there. They should. Use promo code the middle at Vinda, vintagehondaclassics.com. No, I don't know what the actual website is. Uh, you know something, Swag, that, uh, that I wish existed more? I've recently realized. When I, when I thought that I was going to be going to Monday Night Raw... I immediately went to their fan shop to see if I could like hurry up and get something to wear. And, uh, in the hopes that maybe I'd get on screen for some reason, right. As one does. And, and I made the realization there that like, man, if I was the kind of guy that wore t-shirts, there's a billion options for me, but I'm not the kind like, I don't wear, I don't wear t-shirts, graphic t-shirts or button up shirts. Like I would pay, I would pay a little extra to get a button up shirt that has like a classier logo on it of some kind. Now that guy doesn't get on TV, but it's still, it's still swag. Um, and places don't make that kind of thing. And uh, I mean, some do, but I feel like for the, for the adult gentleman who doesn't want an obnoxious t-shirt, it's hard to be a fan and wear something. Mm -hmm. That expresses your fandom. Am I the only one that cares about this? I'm probably the only one that cares about this. And that's why the market isn't adjusting. I don't, I'm, I'm a big t-shirt guy. I'm, I'm a, I'm a grubby version of Steve jobs because I'm not a billionaire, but if I was, I would be like Steve jobs with his turtleneck and his new balance and his, and his Wrangler jeans. But I, I am a t-shirt guy, but I get kind of, it's not that I'm picky in what I'll wear because I can go to Costco and get like a Kirkland plain black shirt and get a five pack and wear those all the time. Yeah. But if I want a shirt that represents something that I'm into, I'm very particular about what I want that shirt to look like. I don't like, obviously anyone who listens knows I like Marvel and Star Wars. I don't want a cheesy looking cartoon version of the character on a shirt i want it to be like mm -hmm. a cool so it, it helps when i buy if i happen to be getting Corey like a birthday or christmas gift because i know what i would like and what feels cheesy and i know what i would like and what feels cool or unique enough or different um and so i would want a unique it would take me a while if i was picking a wwe shirt i'd probably have to go through all 15 pages of shirts narrow down to like two or three and then pick the one that's like a little bit less. I like a little bit less obvious, not just like stone cold on a shirt, like smashing the cans. Right. right like right. it's gotta be a little, gotta be a little different. And so yeah. th that that's the hard part for me. It's, it's finding something that actually just feels a little different and unique and it's not a cheap shirt. 
So you're you're referring to like a subtle nod to that fandom or that franchise, like maybe a catchphrase that most it's not blatantly that thing. It's not a big this color, red, white and blue Captain America shield. It's like a vintage faded. Maybe like it's a subtle thing. And Kendall, you're talking about like if you're not a T-shirt guy, how do you buy stuff that is like show support yeah. for a team or a wrestler or mm. something like i mean that. i i am a hat guy yeah but even even at that i'm i'm pretty particular about the hats that i purchased kind of in, in the same kind of way that dylan is it's not necessarily subtlety that, that i'm after but it's like flashiness that i'm not after is i guess kind of what it is and and certain aesthetic right so yeah i can understand that i don't want the cartoon version um but uh but yeah i don't know like a good one so like becky lynch is one of my favorites and she has she used to be known as the man she right. hasn't used that moniker in a long time now big time bex is, is the only one that she uses these days and the man logo is a pretty like <laughs> cool logo all it says is the man there's nothing flashy about it like that that would make a good hat and people wouldn't even know that you're a wrestling fan looking at that and mm-hmm. unless they are a wrestling fan then they know what it is they'll recognize the the letter stacking there whatever it's called um but otherwise people will just be like oh that guy must be full of himself <laughs> which would be another reason maybe not to wear the hat but so what i'm hearing is you just like a nice reasonable Navy blue Land's End button up short sleeve shirt that says the man on it. <laughs> Long you'd sleeve, like, actually. You'd like, you'd like a WWE collection from Eddie Bauer, is what I'm hearing. <laughs> That's yes, <laughs> that would work for me. If you could just get some nice short sleeve button up shirts, yes, part, in, in partnership and tandem with WWE, you want to feel like a classier gentleman when you support your favorite wrestler. And I'm all about long sleeves too. And when I'm okay. hot, I roll them up. But this so that, is see, that, that's how picky I am. Like I'm not, yes, button up, short sleeve button up. No. Yeah. And, uh, and, and all of this, and I'm asking, and I'm also going to ask for weird, big and tall sizes. So, <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think, I think we're <laughs> onto something here. There needs to be something between the long sleeve button up shirt with the embroidered whatever it is pick your favorite sports team here over the left pocket and the ed hardy affliction shirts with graphics all over the button down shirt so like yes. what's in between those two things you know i, I mean I, uh, oh go ahead no, no i i just i have a i have a thought which is that M. Taylor needs to start partnering with people, and that way people can get custom-made shirts with whatever logo you choose to embroider onto the shirts. And with M. Taylor, you could probably even choose where you want that logo to be and have like a secondary logo, like on the cuff or something. Like, uh, come I'm on, M. Pull, Taylor, do I'm it. Gonna, that. There you go, M. Taylor. But I'm going to pull this up, with Dylan, while you're saying your thing. Jeremy Kester just sent me a link that. Was it Land's End or was it Eddie Bauer that did a run of Boba Fett inspired stuff? Uh, go ahead. Well, that's it's funny. Those were exactly the two names that I said in jest. But like as as companies are finding ways to appeal to the nerd, the nerdy adults like case in point, Pottery Barn has like a Star Wars collection by the way, like Pottery Barn kids, like at some point, Williams and Sonoma has Star Wars and Marvel themed merchandise. At some point, <laughs> these these kind of what would have been the boring middle aged brands. No, no offense intended. But, you know, when you're a kid, you don't get excited about shopping at Land's End. Right. At some point, though, these brands started going, um, these millennials and like Gen Z, they're going to want like the things that they enjoy on our merchandise. And so I kind of said those two brands in jest, but I think it's maybe time that one of those, uh, if anyone can do it, the Eddie Bauer, they have really nice materials. They've got a lot of color selection already. Um, I think they're fully equipped. They've just got to work out some of these logos uh, with, with like WWE, with Star Wars, with Marvel, with DC. I it's mean, kind it, of like yeah. think, think NFL, NBA. 
it was like Think Geek, who did a really good job at coming up with unique merchandise based around fandoms before they got bought by GameStop. <clears throat> you need those kind of creative people working with some of these designers at... Um, oh, I totally saw these. Uh, I'm glad Kester sent you these. Um, you just need some of these designers from like Think Geek to work with some of these traditional companies to come up with sweet merch. Yeah. See, this one's nice and subtle, right? Like, if you saw this little emblem on this this uh, parka, you would have no idea what that is. But if a Star Wars fan walked up to you, you'd be like, "Oh, snap, bro! Where'd you get that?" Yeah, because it, and it otherwise just looks like a nice shirt, a nice jacket. I, Corey, I hope you ordered some of that. <laughs> I still want those uh, Boba Fett Adidas kicks right here with the leather pockets. Uh-huh. On the side. And see, they're extra, they're extra handy since you have a motorcycle because you get extra pouches on your shoes. Yeah, man. See, look. At- if if you're just listening on uh, on a podcast player and not on watching on YouTube, Corey has pulled up the Boba Fett themed Adidas, and one of the shoes has a literal like belt pouch attached to the side of the shoe. They're very Boba Fett themed. Very cool. And uh, you could stash a little something in there and uh, it would be very handy. Yeah, it would be. Speaking of the bike, I, I, uh, this is my first winter with the motorcycle and I, I didn't know what I was going to do with the bike over winter. Um, the dealership that I bought it from, uh, for a nominal fee, will store your bike at their facility. It's a three-store, three-story facility. They'll store it at their facility all winter. Keep it on a trickle charger. They'll start it up every once in a while to just keep, you know, whatever things running. They'll do. Um, they'll give it a once-over before they store it, and then a once-over in the spring when you're ready to come pick it up. Make sure everything's buttoned up and and good and whatever. Um, I didn't do that. Uh, instead, I chatted with our friend, uh, Greg, uh, who got me into to writing. And he said, yeah, man, just like put it in your garage, put it on a trickle charger. You might want to put in like a fuel mix, like an ethanol guard to keep your, your gasoline from getting gummy at the bottom of your tank and like gunking up your fuel lines. But other than that, like not really much you need to do. So I cleaned the garage. I could only get one vehicle in our two car garage because of all of our kids stuff. And I decided to store it over the winter, which has been cool because on these unseasonably warm days, I've been able to get it out. And I put that ethanol guard in there at the beginning of winter, knowing even if I ride it a couple of times, I'm not going to use a full tank of gas. So in the middle of winter on one day, it was like almost 60 degrees here in Columbus. And then another, it was like in the fifties, I got the bike out and it just felt so good to after a very long time. And it's surreal to be like riding next to a Creek that is frozen over. And there's still patches of snow over the slowly babbling Brook. And you're like riding in winter. It's just been, it's been really fun. But I thought as I was riding, I'm like, I'm going to mention that on the podcast, just something about getting the bike out in the middle of winter and passing multiple bikes on the road who also had the same idea. Uh, it's yeah, just yeah. It's pretty cool. But I thought there was some interesting learning about like, what the heck do you do with a bike uh, for those that aren't in a place where it's only nice um, a small portion of the year? What do you do with a bike in winter? So, yeah. Mm. Huh. It's been fun. Well, if, cool. you, if you think babbling brooks are thrilling, hang tight. We're going to take a quick break and hear from one of our friends in the Odd Pods Media Network. Hi, I'm Sam. I'm Richie. I'm Little Matt. And here in the 500 Section Lounge, we are three dads who host a family-friendly weekly podcast. Yep, we laugh, we go on tangents, and we talk to great guests. Tangents? I I don't know what you're talking about with that. You know, there are gases leaking. Uh, All right, all right, okay. Yeah, we have legendary conversations from sports to history and everything in between. So be on the lookout for what we do next. And always be there to grab grab a a listen. listen. I've been watching a guy recently on stock or not on stock X. Well, uh, guys who resell shoes and, uh, and they, some of them own shops and and things uh, to buy, sell and trade shoes. And I've watched a good handful of videos 
on YouTube about people trying their best to get fakes through StockX. Um, not not for nefarious reasons, just kind of like as a challenge to see if StockX will catch them. And I'm convinced that StockX, I, like, I don't know if they have witches that are like sniffing shoes and can tell if they're fake or not. But goodness gracious, man, some of the things that they're sending back is fake and they don't tell you why. But seems legit. I'm still never going to pay the money to buy something yeah, on StockX, but mm-hmm. that's quite the skill. I've never seen that like job requirement on Indeed, like which to smell shoes. Um, believe it or not, smelling which. Believe it or not, it's it's a thing. Like <laughs> even though they're verified from, I've only bought purchased two pair. Um, even though they're already verified and they've been through whatever witches and goblins and leprechauns they ask to do it. Like, I'm like, there are a couple telltale things you can look for and some of the markings and the badges and the sm- smell is one of the things that they, that they look at, not look at. That's, That's the one other of the things. Thing. Are we on the second half now? Or are we, uh, we have to be, we, <laughs> we have to be. Okay, cool. I thought I was just talking on the side. <laughs> but no, I noticed in I noticed in those videos, like a lot of the guys who have the shops, like a customer will come in and get, show them like a dozen boxes of shoes, and each one like he'll they they always look at the box and inspect the tag, and make sure the thing that's in the box matches, get it out first thing, sniff the inside of the shoe, <laughs> and I don't know why that cracks me up to see that because um, it's a it's a used shoe, it just seems a little gross to me, like but, wine uh, connoisseurs, like. <laughs> Yeah. See, oh, this yeah. is where oh. I this is where I get to be the balance to some of the weird stuff you guys are into. Why what's the what's the smell of the shoe thing? Is that literally because it's just a smell that's that they enjoy? Is that a thing? No, it's it's a test. It's a test. It's, so I'm assuming that they can that if there's that they are probably very familiar with what Nike shoes generally smell like. And if there's a chemical smell that doesn't match, it probably came from a cheap factory in China. I mean, honestly, next door to the one that's making the real Nikes, but still, or somebody doctored it and somehow or replaced something they shouldn't and they used the wrong kind of glue and that glue stinks. Um, My guess is it's something like that. Yeah. It's so wild. That's so foreign to me because I don't like... I. I don't ever buy like ex- like really nice shoes or really nice whatever to where I'd even think about that. If somebody told me they were real, I'd go, well, they're real or they look real enough that that's why I'm buying them to get the look. But yeah, being like able to notice like a certain smell or uh, whatever else. You've is, smelled is, it before and it's as dumb as it sounds. A brand new pair of Nikes smells like a brand new pair of Nikes. Like it smells like the inside of a Foot Locker, like you would know if this came from another place. It doesn't have that. It's stupid, but it doesn't have that Nike factory smell. People can be into what they're into. God bless you. God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh boy. And here I just thought shoes were shoes. What do I I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm, I fall for everything. I, (laughs) I buy, I buy liquid and Honda hoodies and, (laughs) I <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Hey, sounds like I you guys to take sounds like you time. guys agree with what my friend said. So that's cool. Go ahead. That's I want to I want to take this time just to remind everybody uh to boycott responsibly and uh do your own research and and please know this that poor Smirnoff is made in Connecticut. <laughs> that's all that's my PSA. <laughs> thought I would do smearing off a, a solid there. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. <laughs> oh. Hey, um, work has been crazy and uh, I needed a mental decompression. And my wife was going to take uh, one of our children to a ice skating birthday party. Uh, here in Columbus and the others wanted to tag along. And it was like, as long as you're not bothering your sister, who's there for her party, we can skate on a different part of the rink and we'll have a good time. Long story long, they were going to be gone for like six or eight hours. So Saturday from the time they left in the morning 
until six or eight hours later, I sat my white butt on my couch and just watched whatever I wanted, only getting up to use the restroom and grab food. And I got to tell you, yeah, I really needed that. (laughs) It's been so long since I've had like a really lazy day with the house to myself and catching up on all of the shows and podcasts and things that I wanted. It was really, really nice. And it just reminded me that, you know, sometimes I'm guilty of like, what's the next goal? What's the next thing I want to achieve? What's next on my to-do list? And I'm like, sometimes rest is, uh, sometimes rest is the answer and shutting your brain off and just not feeling like you have to earn some time on the couch, you know? Anyway, I thought I'd throw that out there. I, I, I really want to know what you watch, but I have a question first about that, because if you're anything like me and we all know that you are, did you this uh, let me rephrase i already know the answer to that what did you plan for your snacks and your meals because i know you would have been thinking about (laughs) what kind of snacks or food you would have wanted to have for this extended extended period of time where you could go unbothered oh uh sherry the 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 couple days before had gotten one of those really long party subs Mm -hmm. from the grocery store and uh it was supposed to last our whole family like a couple of days (laughs) and i kind of just felt like shaggy from scooby-doo and was like i'm just gonna (laughs) (laughs) i can't believe how good this thing is like like scoob um so you were so you were staying ahead of that rationing to make sure you had a (laughs) uh satisfying amount saved for for saturday yeah, no, I, I didn't plan well. Had I planned well, I would have gotten Taco Bell and whatever. I was so lazy, though, in the morning where I was just like, I don't even I don't even care. I'll just eat like, you know, you do that thing where you're just you're you're grazing in your own house and you're like, oh, fruit snacks for the kids lunches. I'll have some of that. Oh, two pieces of ham from the refrigerator. Oh, a half of a bag of Doritos. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I definitely do that. And I start combining things that I I start looking at things a little weird and thinking about what I can combine. Would that go? Like, I'm sure I've mentioned it before, but like I've definitely put cold spaghetti in a tortilla and made a burrito out of it. Like with because I had leftover spaghetti and like, why not? Like (laughs) who says these flavors can't go together? So, oh, oh, there's three bites of jello. I'll swish that around in my mouth like it's mouthwash. Oh, a pretzel stick. This looks nice. Like, yeah, completely (laughs) random. None of those things I had on Saturday, by the way. But uh, yeah, it was nice. I needed it. Good. So I'm sure you got to stream a few things in there. I did. Yeah. Um, Boy, (laughs) it it was quite the list. So, um, well, I caught up on some podcasts and Kendall, this it, it made me think when you were talking about like showing support for things you like, I did because there's all these um, social media influencers, podcasters, everybody's getting into the merch game. And so one way that you can wear some cool gear that is like a subtle nod that only a few people would pick. I bought some merch from some of my favorite podcasters, too. So I'll be wearing some of those hoodies. Just little inside jokes from their cool. show. Hey, what would you like yeah. if, if we were going to make some merch listeners? What should our uh, what should our stuff say? What would you buy with our stuff on it? Maybe just the logo, but maybe some of our funny sayings or inside jokes or love to hear your thoughts. And follow up question yeah. if you have a preference, because this is a genuine question. There's a difference between, you know, something simple like a, a button or a sticker or a mug or a pencil or pen with a logo on it and then there's like stuff that you can wear a shirt a hoodie a hat would it be more important for anyone that might have an opinion would it be more important to just have something with a logo or something reference to our show on it or are you like me where you're like I wouldn't even buy it if it wasn't like a like a really nice shirt like I don't I don't want something that would be like on the Walmart like the logo is printed crooked, you know, five dollar ch- checkout t shirt on the way out the door, kind of thing. So, if you have any opinions on that, uh, let us know that too. 
Yeah. I mean, we don't want to badmouth something that we might make a decision toward, but I think people out there know what we're talking about. <laughs> like every podcast our size who has a store has this particular kind of store. And mm-hmm. uh, anyway, yeah, we're not doing that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, what about products that would be specific to the podcast? So, as in, like, maybe we could get Perry from the middle Perry suspenders. Yeah, who knows the pants we're holding? I think my up. internet's not doing all that great. <laughs> yeah, I no, think I we, could get, we could get exactly. a custom. Exactly. We could get like the custom shell for a PlayStation Five, like built just for our show, for fans that also want a PlayStation yes. Five. There yeah. you go. Okay, so uh, really, all I did boring answer. Really, all I did was just catch up on a bunch of podcasts. Uh, um. So all of the ones that I subscribed to, uh, I was a few episodes back on each of those. So I caught up on that, which was nice. Um, but after that nice six or so hours on Saturday, I've watched a handful of other things. Um, been watching UFC every weekend. Fight night was this past weekend. That was, uh, so that was all free. Uh, I've been hearing so much about Rick and Morty over the years, the cartoon that is a hit with millennials and, and younger. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I've been doing that piecemeal on Hulu plus and just finished season one. It's a good time. Oh, that Rick and that Morty. Uh, do you guys know much about it? I didn't know much about it. Hey, so many cultural references, but I don't know that I've seen more than 15 minutes of, of any of it. Right. I was seeing memes and gifts and merch and people referencing it. And I was like, what is this show? It's like Todd Chrisley from Chrisley Knows Best. Like, who is this guy? Who is he? Why does he have a show? Do you guys know this show on, no. on USA? If you saw his face, somebody out there is like, yeah. Anyway, um, so I watched oh, that. Up. I've now watched every single Adam Savage one day build on his tested oh channel so he does these one day builds where he makes something cool in his workshop and i don't know there's like a hundred of them i've watched every single one of those now over the last year or two um sherry and i started this is us again we're like there's like six or so episodes in our dvr on that do you guys get into that show this is us. yes still watching that and um i don't know there's a million little things Million little things. Still watching those. They could have both been over already, and I would have been fine with it. But they're fine. They're fine. The best TV. The best TV is not happening on a major network for me at this point. It's it's happening on yeah. different streaming apps. But they're fine. They're fine. Yeah. There there are some really beautiful tender moments. There's like, oh yeah, that is. You know what? That is parenting in a nutshell. In that moment that they just captured. And then the, then the storylines all over the place and they ask more questions than they answer. And they're like, this final season of This Is Us, you've watched for this many years. We're going to answer all your questions. And in the first yeah. four episodes, they're going down a whole bunch of other untraversed yeah. tra- trails. And I'm like, I thought we were wrapping stuff up and you're asking more <laughs> questions. Um, but the thing I'm most excited to talk to you guys about, that's just, I just flew through those. So you guys remember a year or two ago uh this documentary free solo came out about alex hunold the uh mountain climber who doesn't use any ropes or safety equipment he just what's called free solo climbs these insane sheer rock faces and mountains so netflix recommends that i watch this show called the alpinist or alpinist if you prefer (laughs) So The Alpinist is about uh, Alex Hunold had been hearing about this guy who was, without even attempting to, breaking some of his speed records on rock faces, uh, like in Squamish, British Columbia is one of the most popular um, rock climbing areas. And there's a famous sheer rock face there called the Grand Wall. And this kid was like breaking Alex Honnold's records in terms of speed. Now, they don't always do speed climbs. Um, It's more of just a game that like it's like essentially a pissing match between rock climbers. They just do it for funsies. Um, And this kid wasn't even trying. He was just beating Alex Honnold's records, who was supposed to be like one of the best and who 
all of Free Solo was about Alex Honnold. So like he's super, he, he's gotten super popular over the years. The interesting thing about this guy who was beating his records and his name is Mark Andre Leclerc, uh, a Canadian. He doesn't want fanfare. He doesn't care if movies are made about him. He's he's just he does it for his own personal. Enjoy. He doesn't even tell people where he's going. He doesn't take safety equipment with him or a device of any kind. Should something happen, he just he doesn't even he doesn't even tell folks. And he does what's called on site climbing, meaning he doesn't study a rock formation. He goes to the base of it, looks at it and figures it out as he goes and free solo climbs these insane things. So this documentary crew starts following him and like a couple, I don't know, a handful of months into the shoot of this documentary, sort of following his life, the filmmakers can't find him. And he's like, solo climbing for me is about truly being alone. And if you guys are following me, that kind of takes the fun out of it. I don't really care if people make a movie about me or ever see it. I just want to go do this. But he finally agrees to like, let him follow some of these. But he just disappeared for long periods of time. And they were finding him on other people's social media accounts that he was climbing with doing incredible (laughs) climbs. And they're like, hey, man we're filming you. We would have really liked to know that you went down to Patagonia and just summited one of the most difficult things. He's like, yeah, sorry. He's just like, so to himself in like a really inspiring, noble sort of beautiful way. Um, I don't want to tell you how the documentary uh, sort of wraps up. He starts climbing with his girlfriend and it's just, man, it's just so well done. I, I highly recommend it. if you liked free solo, Alex Honnold is 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 uh, in this, and they talk. He talks a lot about Marc Andre uh, Leclerc. Really, really good, beautiful shots. And I watched it, looking at this guy going, whatever he has, <laughs> call it bravery or stupidity or just sheer um, hunger, an unquenchable, unquenchable thirst for adventure or whatever, to do what he's doing. He would climb, he would climb what they call mixed climbing, which is you're going from rock to frozen waterfalls, basically giant icicles, back to rock to snow. And he's having to change his shoes based on which section of that and spend the night, spend the night suspended (laughs) from sections, but no safety gear. He's just, it's, I'm doing a really poor job explaining it. So good. The Alpinist on Netflix. Check it out. It's worth an hour and a half. I mean, I think my favorite thing about that story is that it came right after you eating party sub for eight hours. (laughs) That's the beauty of this podcast is that those two stories just right beside each other. You're welcome. Um, The juxtaposition of those two things. Yeah. Spot on. Yeah. Uh, so I, um, I've talked many times about, um, <clears throat> you and McGregor and, uh, the, the three docuseries long way uh, around down and up. Uh, I'm not watching those again. I'm about to, but the one thing I wanted to watch on Apple TV plus, cause there's very little on there that I seem to seem to care about. The one, th- one thing I didn't want to watch is Finch. I don't know if you guys have seen that uh, on Apple TV Plus. Yeah, I'm so curious to hear how, what you thought of it because I can't get past yeah. the robot in the trailer. <laughs> yeah, um, and really, the whole it, this is one of those movies that everyone has these on occasion where you're like, I'm literally just watching it because this person's in it, and that's Tom Hanks for me. And I don't watch everything that Tom Hanks is in. It's got to be accessible. It's got to be in an app that I've got access to, and I've you know got to have time to do it. But Finch was one of those that it's like we're doing this trial of Apple TV Plus. Tom Hanks is super likable. Sure, why not? I loved Castaway. I got a little bit of a Castaway vibe from it, um, and so uh, it was. It was fine. I, I I think he does he does so many of these types of drama movies that so many of them start to feel similar. Um, it doesn't mean that any one of them on their own is bad or 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 whatever, but I just um 
I I thought it was fine if you're into kind of the post-apocalyptic thing, but the 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 weird thing for me at the end of at the end of all of it is it's weird to have him who he generally plays a little bit safer, more family fen- friendly roles. It's weird to have that sitting right beside this whole apocalyptic post-apocalyptic world theme. Those typically don't sit beside each other. If you have a post-apocalyptic world, there's danger and it's going to be heavy action drama that sits inside that world. Mm -hmm. You don't normally have family friendly kind of sitting inside of a post-apocalyptic world, which is essentially what the movie was. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that they tried it. Uh, Tom Hanks is very likable in it still um, because he's Tom Hanks. And, um, I, I'm glad that I watched it. I wouldn't go back to it, but it was just one of those things that I knew I kind of wanted to consider. And there's some sweet moments with, you know, the, the, the premise, if you're not familiar with Finch at all, um, you know, Tom Hanks is, is as we kind of see in the trailer or, or as we're led to believe in the trailer, um, you know, one of the last humans left after global catastrophic, you know, weather events, And he's got a dog and a robot. He builds a robot. He teaches the robot how to do enough to help keep the dog alive after he's gone. And that's essentially the premise of the movie. Um, Yeah. And it was, it was nice, you know? And so I don't know if anybody else watched it or it, it just kind of is the, it's unfortunate. It's the running theme for a lot of the Apple TV plus content that I I don't, there's nothing I've been blown away by on Apple TV plus except for Ted Lasso. Um, Ted Lasso is like for sure the best thing that I've watched on there. And so if anyone's got anything buried in Apple TV in their limited content that they just really, really loved, uh, you know, let me know. The other thing we, we watched, um, it hit a Disney plus and HBO max was free guy with Ryan Reynolds, Mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. Uh, if you're into video games at all, um, I thought it was a really fun movie. There's a couple fun cameos uh spread throughout and uh um i thought it was it was good it was great brie brie uh always enjoys ryan ryan reynolds movies that one was easy to convince her to watch (laughs) um and uh i thought that was a lot of fun so that was that was exactly what i thought i was getting into unlike finch which was was hard to tell what i was getting into so those are a couple of things i've streamed recently you could probably skip finch but if you like ryan reynolds definitely check out free guy I love post-apocalyptic settings in films. I love Tom Hanks. When you were Mm -hmm. describing it, it reminded me of something I watched a year or two ago with George Clooney, The Midnight Sky. Do you remember seeing the trailers for that? He's with a little girl in like a frozen tundra and they're Mm -hmm. trying to get to the last radio radio that's available to try to signal to the... Anyway, that's a good one. if you like that sort of survival post-apocalyptic, whatever, but yeah, I don't know. Did, does he have like a speech, not a speech impediment? He kind of has a different sort of uh, way of talking in that movie or he acts a little quirky in the movie. I mean, he, he probably is meant to be in the sense that he's been alone and isolated outside of this relationship with the dog before he builds the robot. So, but nothing really past that. I think the, the, bulk of the movie initially takes place he's like from kansas city or something so or st louis and so he's kind of from the middle of the country and has some kind of neutral accent ish um you know and and you just you get the sense that he's he's alone and that's had an effect on him but he's just trying to you know kind of like what you saw in castaway i mean you're somebody kind of on the edge of going crazy a little bit and the terminal. This guy's alone a lot. <laughs> he is alone a lot. Which <laughs> terminal for me of those three is my favorite movie with Tom Hanks of of those three films specifically. So yeah, yeah, it's fine. I mean, if you're really bored and you love Tom Hanks, give it a watch. But um, I, yeah, I would say That's, there's that is a wonderful recommendation. If you're uh, sorry, bored, <laughs> if you're bored and you love Tom Hanks, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. I love Tom Hanks, but there's no, I get it. No, it's appropriate. It's appropriate. Yeah, it is. So um, he's already gotten a lot of uh, of free time on this episode. So um, he he deserves it because he's Tom Hanks, but not not anymore for the movie. (laughs) Well, I'm excited to watch Free Guy. I know they added it to Disney Plus and the kids have been asking to watch that. And that one seems like a like a 
fun setting, like you said, if you're into gaming and that sort of stuff. Is it okay for the kids? I don't remember. I mean, it's going to be iffy. Mm -hmm. It's going to be iffy for, I would say, for young kids. If your kids are 12, 15, 14, 15, 16 and up, fine. But I would say it's going to be a little iffy, but you can try it. Give it give it a good old 10 minute try and, <laughs> Got it. and Got it. give it the first 10 minutes and see how you feel. All right, Kendall. Um, <clears throat> I want to start by by saying that I, I had tried this with my kids a while ago. It was too soon and they would not sit through it. Uh, and so this time around, I forced them to uh, to sit through a new hope. So they have that under their belt now. How did that go? It went, it went, it went well for, for, uh, for one of the kiddos. And, uh, it went very complainy for <laughs> another kiddo kiddo. And then the other one was just kind of there. He was, he yeah. was okay. So, yeah. so Not that's where that is. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, so so for the one that it went well with, he has already asked to uh, to continue the saga. So, um, yeah, so that that was that. Um, other than that, uh, I know that I have been a broken record on WWE recently, but two things about that. First, I am almost current, and once I'm current, then that frees me up to watch other thing else. I, I just don't want to fall behind again. Um, but anyway, so there's that. The second thing about WWE is I had mentioned before that I, for the first time ever, I was having the experience of getting to watch the lead up to a special event and then having oh, yeah. the resources to watch the special event. And uh, so that happened um, just uh, this past week with Elimination Chamber. And I, I'm, I'm a little underwhelmed by, by Elimination Chamber. Oh. I'll put it that way. Now, I don't know if this is the norm. I, actually, to put it maybe more accurately, I'm impressed at what the WWE gives you on, on Raw and SmackDown. Okay. Maybe yeah. that's a better way of putting it. Yeah. Uh, the, after watching Elimination Chamber, I don't feel like I'm missing out by just watching Raw and SmackDown. Okay. Uh, so, so there is that. Now, WrestleMania is coming up. Yeah, I was going to say, would Royal Rumble and WrestleMania feel the same way? I don't think Royal Rumble would. Um, WrestleMania I already feels different. Yeah. Uh, already feels like it would be just because I know some of the history, right? Some of the things yeah. that have happened there. And, um, <clears throat> and this year, particularly, they're having a two, a two day event uh, in Dallas. And uh, the first day they're going to be like spending a whole bunch of time giving a whole bunch of hoopla to, to Undertaker. And uh, as he's, he's leading the induction class for the hall of fame this year. So um, which how he's not a hall of famer already is weird. Yeah. But so speaking of so doubt, cause they'll be in the Cowboys arena, right? AT&T yeah. stadium. Yeah. Is that AT&T. Yep. Yeah. So uh, Brad, who we've had on the podcast before, uh, who's pretty high up in sports marketing at a local insurance company, uh, he was there getting a tour of AT&T Field months ago. And he was there on a day where they were setting up a wrestling ring. So he starts texting me. He's like, hey, man, something's happening, but I'm not sure what's here this weekend. Literally, all they were shooting was a promo for WrestleMania months ago. And Mark Calloway was either there or his voice was being, um, yeah, through the PA system. Projected, yeah. Projected through the PA system. But this was, this was seriously like months and months ago. So they were shooting promos for it way back at AT&T Stadium to hype the event that's coming up for WrestleMania. So I thought that was, was pretty cool. cool. Because when they were setting up the ring, I know there's a lot of engineering that goes on under the ring. And in fact, if you're like a wrestling fan, that's one of the common mysteries that you don't really know how they get certain sound effects and the padding to keep it safe. But it's also wood and 
how do they do that so they intentionally don't show you how they typically put the the ring itself together um so he was sending me some pictures and i'm like that that I, I know you don't ever get to see what's under the ring, but there's a surprising little amount of support. Well, now I know all they all it was for was for a couple guys to stand on. No fighting was going to be taking True. place. It was just for the the promo. But anyway, um, yeah, I thought that was a little fun fact. So, but I mean, apart from that, I did enjoy Elimination Chamber. But yeah, it was. It was just a little lackluster. It was like, you know, Goldberg was there fighting Roman Reigns, but I, I mean, it wasn't anything special. It was, and which gives me another opinion. Like, if someone like Goldberg is going to come in and, and to attract eyeballs to a special event like that, I'm, that's fine. I'm all about it. But like, I want some kind of legitimate performance. Like, yeah. otherwise, Bring Goldberg back by all means, but like have him do something else. Like yeah. Have him introduce, have him act uh, or whatever else. Don't put him in a match if he can't be in a match. Like, because people are going to expect Goldberg and Roman Reigns to be something amazing. Yeah. And it just wasn't. It was three minutes and like. Spoiler alert. Goldberg is defeated by passing out from a submission hold. Like that's that's how it ended. Yeah. And. It was it was very lackluster, uh, that particular thing. But the actual chamber matches themselves were pretty cool. Um, yeah. I get the impression that the Royal Rumbles and the WrestleMania is like those main events are like you know they feel big, they feel epic. There are big implications, um, <laughs> but those yeah. sort of like tweener events like Money in the Bank and Elimination Chamber, SummerSlam, those are like let slightly less so. Yeah, they're just trying to milk what, uh, <laughs> what Royal Rumble and and uh, and WrestleMania got is, yeah. is getting them, maybe. Yeah, I mean, obviously, this is my first experience with that. Yeah, and we'll see if there's a second one. All right. Ooh. Ooh. Well, those are your those are your streaming updates, ladies. Those are my streaming updates, mm -hmm. and I I did do a fact check that Smirnoff is not actually made in Connecticut. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, uh, but it is made in Illinois. So, but the point is, it's not made in Russia. So, <laughs> know know what you're boycotting before you boycott. Um, Dylan, take us home. <laughs> Head on over to artiusman.com for all your manly needs, like lotion, <laughs> candles. <laughs> And bathroom this stuff. Is starting off. This, is, this is starting off. Make sure to use promo code the middle at checkout for an incredible 25% off your first order. And make sure to load up your cart with some extras for all your loved ones. Because they are a valued partner and we want you to spend your money there. And with that, make sure to check out all our, all our other social media channels. Thanks everybody for tuning in. This has been another episode of From the Middle. Was that Lion's Den or Ardius Man? <laughs> you realize what you were saying? Adam no. purpose. <laughs> what did I say? The, the voice. <laughs> well, I knew mixed, what the mixed with go to Ardius Man for you know manly all your manly stuff, needs. For all your manly needs. Yeah. Yeah, that was like, all intentional. And then the first thing you you mentioned was lotions. <laughs> Yeah, they have lotions. And then you talked right? about bathroom stuff. <laughs> yeah, they have lotions and bathroom stuff, right? Yeah. This is all staying in, by the way. This is all this is staying in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I knew what I was doing. Okay, yeah, then I can confirm I knew what I was doing for that. <clears throat> it certainly wasn't in a normal voice. I'll give you that. No, well, that's not what we were. It's okay. So we love you, Dylan. Why? What did what did you what do you think people are gonna think I meant by that? I nothing. Well, well that's all staying in. Well made Artius Man products that are, you know. Anyway, somebody do the thing for every occasion. <laughs> <laughs>